Here we are, pulling up to the mothership. Got to register at the office here. I felt awkward recording the lady at the desk, but this is the registration form you have to fill out. And in return, she gave me a packet with um, two tags to put on our RV and one for our tow vehicle. So we'll take a look at this packet in a bit. But we are pulling out of the front registration office and pulling into the RV park. This is a free RV parking site for all uh, RVs that are coming in for service that is under a year old. Here we are looking for our assigned parking spot. As you see, there are plenty of Tiffins here. It's actually really exciting to see all the Tiffins, all the different makes and models, and I mean different models. Um, uh, definitely exciting if you're a Tiffin owner. And so this is our spot, it looks like. And just pulling in now. So going back to our packet here, um, so just want to do a walkthrough. This is the tag. I've already put one on the RV, so I'll put one in our tow vehicle in a bit. And uh, let's kind of go through this guide and what we have to fill out. There's a lot of information in here, um, so I'll try to take it, you know, one at a time and uh, help uh, all everybody uh know what to expect when you receive a packet like this um, so over here in the front page is a map of the RV park obviously these are all the RV sites um, available and when we came uh, it's Friday um, it's, you know there's still quite a number of spaces left um, to park here it's about 241 and do note that we need to complete and fill out this packet and return it to the front desk at five by 5 p.m. today in order to have a tech come out early uh, Monday morning to talk to us about the repairs. Uh, this is the uh, all the service bays in um, here and the front that's the registration office there's a laundry right next door and there's a actual store it's probably about to close real soon um, over here is the Allegro Club and a couple other I think repair bays um, if you have that type of repair being done and that's our spot right here in the middle right along here is a chain link fence that separates the RV park from the the bays i see a lot of people park their tow vehicles there and we parked our jeep there as well um so going into the paperwork here obviously this is uh very similar to what i filled out when i was in the registration office just name information uh phone number etc etc uh, pretty self-explanatory in uh, filling out um, going on to the next page uh is uh, this is Tiffin to fill out, I guess it's with their technicians uh, documenting uh, their service done on the, the RV. Um, on this page, there's about 20 lines that you need to list your repairs. They told us if there's more than 20, then we can just add it on the back. So I would really uh, take note of all the repairs that you need done on the, the RV and just list them all. Uh, this is just a recall that they added in here. For the refrigerator um, this is a copy carbon copy of what I filled out like I said it looks exactly like the front page um, and obviously they have your information and they will uh, contact you um, just remember what to when you come to the office there's three things you bring and one is um, the VIN number for the RV the license plate for the RV and the license plate number for your tow vehicle. Uh, this is just a warranty notice. And then um, a repair policy. Um, when you have a chance, obviously read through. I'm a bit of a time crunch, so I want to fill mine out right away. Uh, just do note here, it's highlighted that um, they don't service for any RVs over 10 years old. 
Um, there's two types of service that are being done here. One is regular service for uh, performed on Tiffins that are within four years of the original date of purchase. We have a newer RV, so we're here for our regular service. But for those that are older than 10 years, then they do what's called express bay service. We didn't use this, but basically what we found out is that express bay will give you about three hours of any work done and it needs to be completed within the three hours because then you'll have to exit and you won't be able to come back um, until after 60 days. Uh, that's the two services that are being done here at Tiffin. Uh, this is uh, really just a survey uh, for the technicians. One thing that we've learned also is that before you get service on your Tiffin, it might be a good idea to tip your technicians. Um, I know usually you tip your technicians after, but um, you know if you want that special attention, uh, it doesn't hurt to tip them before too as well. Um, this is just another survey Tiffin uh, sends out if you have any feedback, any suggestions for Tiffin motorhomes and the build and the features inside the motorhome. Uh, there was a fire extinguisher recall for Kitty. We don't have that brand, so this didn't really apply to us. Um, there's another listing of all the local repair facilities within Red Bay and I'll tell you Red Bay is like just special to Tiffin because there are many companies here repair technicians that work on Tiffin. Uh, we actually used a couple of them. Um, there was one detail cleaning that's right across the street and we used them to take care of our uh, to wash and clean our RV. Another one was uh, installing the undercarriage lights, which we also found uh, really useful in some of these ads that were included in this packet. This is just a map of Red Bay and it's a small town and it's really just, it's Red Bay. I mean, the town is Tiffin itself, which is pretty amazing. Um, and these are just discounts and coupons and business advertisement for what's local. Here's uh, just another map of Red Bay. So skim through this like we did because we found some really useful here to do custom work. Like I told you, the undercarriage lights, which you'll see at the end. But a lot of people, you know, make appointments um, to use these repair facilities before they even come to Red Bay. We're new, so we didn't know. These are just service area campground rules. Um, one thing that really stood out that is different from all the other kind of rules is that you need to make sure to grab all the stuff that you that you can't leave sewer hoses laying out because people unhook when they go into service bays or go to repairs you can't leave your things there like it's your uh, parking sp you know spot permanently you you have to take your service sewer hoses and everything and put it away and take them with you this park is um you know pretty spacious no frills but suits our needs so this is our laundry list of repair work that we need to get done on the rv it's way more than 20 we filled out all 20 lines and added some more on the back too as well uh, they said just fill out everything you you know want we're still under warranty so it's good to just put down everything and we've noticed and actually kept a tally list of all the things that we came across before even coming to red bay um, so there are some major and some minor. The biggest one um, I'll talk about as the annual service. We wanted, you know, oil, aqua hot system, batteries, um, you know, the everything, you know, to generator getting service. The second is the backslide is not aligned and it's uh, stripped. So when it opens, it's kind of make like this really loud cracking sound. Um, a uh, third thing is slides are not flush when they're closed so you could see it that it's kind of sticking out from the outside when you're looking at it from the outside uh, temperature and pressure uh, sensors are you know not accurate um, also 
you know, uh, the slide hits the bay doors when they're open. Uh, the back toilet does not hold water. It kind of clogs or something. Uh, the passenger step cover won't work. Uh, it's probably a switch or something, but that just happened right when we pulled in and is like halfway open right now. Um, the slide awnings are loose. Um, That's what my husband noted. Uh, stabilizers release in the middle of the night. Sometimes we're laying there half asleep and then you just hear air slips out. The bay doors is not flushed when closed. Uh, a lot of these are, you know, little cosmetic stuff, but we list them anyway. Passenger window drops down really hard when I try to close it. So it kind of slams down unlike the rest of the RV. The main TV and the speakers are loose. Um, somebody just needs to screw this thing in. The bedroom slide door tracks are broken as well. This is um, um, kind of annoying. Uh, the bathroom front vent is broken. The dryer vent um, in, is loose in the back of the coach. It's coming off. Um, the smoke detector won't stay on. It's weird. The slides knocks it off when we try to close the slide. Uh, the drawer under the bunk doors also does not close all the way. Um, cosmetic things, they're not flush. Front doors not aligned. Uh, there's caulking, uh, you know, stripping that goes underneath the slide that needs to be replaced. And the shower drain is clogged. Uh, that's probably my fault. Um, I need to get one of those uh, shower things because my hair, or shower traps, traps my hair. Um, Onto the back, there's screws in the fan and the door is missing. It's funny because sometimes we'll find screws and can't really figure out where it belongs. Cabinet's loose. Uh, it's probably missing screws too as well. It's not lined up. And the back bathroom cabinet knob is, is bent. Um, the towel drawer, when it pulls out, it just kind of knocks the, the knob. Um, so this is our list here that I'm going to turn in. It's, what, 413 right now. I have about 45 minutes to get walk over to the office uh this is the um fence i was talking about earlier and that's where we park our tow vehicle so what i'm gonna do is make my way over to the front desk uh turn my paperwork in and maybe uh, check out the store this is the rv store next to the registration office um so I mean, there's definitely a lot of RV parts here. I have no idea what kind of parts, but there seems to be every part imaginable. This is the detail shop right across from the service center. Uh, I took a close up of the uh, shop so you could see their phone number. So you can make a reservation to get the car cleaned. I think we paid about like 350 bucks or something for the outside. We drove around the area to the service center and this is another campground that's in the back. We actually stayed there at another time when we came back. Um, and without any reservation. So that's the only thing about it that you can't reserve it. This is the Allegro Club, uh, in the, also in the back of the service center. Uh, there's definitely a lot of parking. This is kind of driving through town, uh, the streets and kind of just check out the area. It's very quiet neighborhoods. Um, a lot of people clock out really early, so. This is a water park we found nearby. We didn't actually go in and, and go into this area, but this is um, driving through town again. It's a very small town. There's, you know, the basic stuff. This is the service bays. Um, when we were called in, I think it was very early morning. So it's like 7 a.m. You have to drop off at 7 a.m. because you'll have to take your RV back at 3 p.m. every day. So every morning that we were there, we would receive an email like this from Stan that would tell us where we are on the wait list. It went by fairly quick, longer than, I mean, shorter than we expected. I think we were admitted in about a week.
part that we can't see. Yeah, so that's... Uh, yeah, that'd be, yeah we, can, we don't work for him. That, that yes. part, but, but your sister's inside the tires. So. Yeah, okay, so then... If it was, if it was Tim and Cassie, yeah. Okay. Flat hits, uh, bay doors. Oh, oh, so that's outside. Them two right over here, right? Uh, back, yeah, you know. It's <laughs> okay. I had you already know. Yeah, you know they just like this. Okay. All right. Back towards don't hold water, and we talked about, about that. Y'all uh, got any cabinet work or anything like that? Yeah, so it's this one right here. Okay. And then I think that's it. These are kind of just need to be tightened up. Okay. Yep. I think these two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Passer step cover the wound. Oh, but they fixed that. There's a fuse in the door. Okay. Got it. That's dope. Yeah. Care. All right, slide on in. Blues. Oh, the, uh, the cupboard. I don't think it's this one, it's the back one, it's flat. So dropping off, uh, after dropping off the RV, we headed into town uh, because we booked a one night stay at Hotel Red Bay, uh, which is in downtown. And literally this is downtown. You see Tiffin's everywhere. This is the land of Tiffin. This is Hotel Red Bay itself. Uh, which is a decent stay um, got to you know get work done uh, right in town there's a one large grocery market called big star if you're sick and tired of fast food in red bay like mcdonald's subway definitely stop into big star so that you can uh, you know grab on the go sushi which is pretty good i mean the best you can find in this uh, small town this is the downtown tiffin lounge on the pet service side. It's actually really nice. Okay. So they allow pets in here. There's Wi-Fi. There's a bathroom in the back. It's a great place to relax and work. It's fairly quiet. Kids running around. Once you're done with the RV, they actually walk you over to an office located in the middle of this walkway uh, where, you know, they'll hand off your paperwork to the lady who's gonna process your payment. Uh, just to note here to be extra patient because apparently they, everything is done manually. So it's not electronic submission. Um, the lady has to type down all of the details of your repair work. And if she can't read or there's missing information from the technician, they just keep going back and forth, back and forth until she finally types it all in and then you can finally make a payment. I think the only hassle about Tiffin is that you drop it off at seven every morning and pick it up at three in the afternoon uh, every day that is done. You don't leave your RV there at the bay, but it allows for a lot of time in between. Like I did upgrading to the bathroom. I removed that ugly cornice uh, and replaced it with uh, a curtain. Uh, put some subway tiles on the back and also this is the undercarriage light that um, I mentioned previously there was a, a guy there I think his name is Jonathan um, that you can uh, contact and he'll come out to the RV uh, park where you park you actually have to drive the RV off the lot by just a little bit down the street and then he'll install that within a few hours and I think this one, having it wrap all the way around the front and back, I think was about six or eight hundred dollars. The service center allowed for packages too, oh. so we got a lot of our package here sent here. But overall, that is really uh, our first time experience at the Tiffin Service Center in Red Bay. Uh, we actually came back at another time, and the wait was much longer, about two weeks. But hopefully that helps everyone as a new Tiffin owner on what to expect on coming back for your one year warranty. So we actually had a pretty good stay. And if you have toddlers, then um, you, you know, we made a couple of day trips out to like a local museum that was nearby. And, um, you know, it was probably during COVID. So there wasn't a lot of people and a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, it was re really the place is fairly empty and so it's like having an entire Man. discovery center all Man. to ourselves uh there was also you know we went to the uh trampoline park um he had a such a a, a blast here there. and you can find um you know these anywhere uh this is um, 
forgot what it's called, but it's like the altitude, I think. Altitude. You can fall uh, down. Trampoline yeah, park. Yeah. Um, so we spent kind of an evening just hanging out here and just a great way to expend his energy. I know it gets really hectic for us when we're doing repairs and such, but I definitely always, you know, want to make sure that he's having a lot of fun while we're always so busy with work and uh, the repair, you know, getting him up super early and just a lot of back and forth. Um, we did a day trip out to Toshi Mingo uh, State Park too as well. It's a beautiful park with some really cool bridges. Um, always got to try to get our hiking in um, so our dog gets his exercise too as well because he's always cooped up in the RV yeah. and especially during the whole it's time bouncy. that you know we're back and forth back and forth um, but this is a great park it's not a lot of people there's a lot of cool rock formation it's like a dripping spring um, falling over the rocks and uh, my boy definitely got a kick out of you know the bridge and stuff and so that was pretty fun uh, we also did another day trip out to Tupelo, Miss, uh, Mississippi, and visited the birthplace of Elvis Presley. So uh, it was close enough for us. So while we were getting our RV repaired, we made a day trip out there and um, spent, you know, uh, about an hour or two on the grounds, just kind of check out. Uh, pretty cool, just to witness and to see for ourselves. Um, obviously, you know, growing up and hearing of Elvis, and my boy has no idea who Elvis Presley is, but uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, don't want to miss something like this being so close to Red Bay. Thank you guys so much for watching make sure give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe and good luck at red bay